uh, what like yard sale did you get your computer equipment at? Because I love seeing this like this <laughs> amalgamation of different computer hardware that you then were able to kind of smartly use to make it look like it was doing something else. <laughs> was that something you had lying around? Did you just kind of good borrow question. stuff? <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, well, my day job is actually as an IT manager. So all of like the stuff that we've been chucking out for years and throwing in skips, I've been like put into one side. <laughs> Start from Watcher Pass. Today I'm joined by Richard Miller, the writer and co-director of Repeat, which is available in theaters digitally and on demand. It came out November 19, 2021. We're gonna to talk to him in just a second, but first let's check out the trailer. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. Helps me out a lot. Thank you. Where do we go when we die? Our bodies stay here, but our consciousness, our soul, spirit, whatever you want to call it, we now know that it doesn't just switch off. I first discovered an infinitely complex amount of noise floating around us, essentially everywhere. Tests showed that this noise formed strings of information. But it was operating at a level that we couldn't reach. Until now. I guess you've spoken to someone you've lost. Awesome. So thanks so much for joining me. This is Richard Miller, the writer and co-director of Repeat, which is available digitally on demand and in theaters on November 19, 2021. So it's out now. It is a surprising indie film. I actually, was, I loved it. I thought it was really you know, clever. I thought it had a really good use of special effects. And I, I liked the kind of the underlying dramatic pr premise of it. So thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, no, no problem at all. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so I guess the first question is, you know, what was the inspiration for this film? You wrote it. I hope it's not something terrible, but I could, you know, very much see it being something terrible given the subject matter. Um, no, I, th I think it was. I think it was. It was filmed of that ilk that I just particularly enjoy um, sci-fi with a with some um, some depth to it. Um, uh, so the. I don't, I don't think there was one natural inspiration. It was, um, it was very much a, a um, an evolution. The film as, as we went along. So, yeah, it's a hard one to answer. Where I, I always think, where does any, when is, where does any sort of original thought come from? You know, it's, it's hard to, <laughs> hard to say. But yeah, uh, it was very much an evolution of the story. Can you just break it down? Like, what was the original thought? Like, let's go. <laughs> I know it's tough to do. <laughs> um, so you kind of had, did you write this and then get your co-director involved? Because you, you had a co-director as well. Um, or was this, you know, a project that you kind of got into a script and then you're like, hey, I've been working on this. You know, what do you think? How, how did that process work? Yeah, the co my, my co-director lives literally like five minutes down from my, my house. Um, and he's more of a, he's more of the cinematography side um so he, he, he's, he's not really a, a story construct person but he but we we basically um we worked on a lot of shorts over the last couple of couple of years together um and he knew i, I was writing this so it was always a it was a, it was a very much a he, he was i think he's been waiting for us to get a feature together rather than just making shorts um so he he knew that had like the, the, the seeds of an idea um, and then it's, it quickly came together. That's awesome yeah because I, I noticed you had I think you had some feature films at least in your in your background but this was I think maybe your first like big push of the feature is that is that correct? Yes so, so th this this although being a, a no budget film the the film <laughs> that we did previously um, which was about 10 years ago was a no 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 budget film it was it was <laughs> uh, but but uh, a massive learning experience. I don't think we could have achieved what we achieved with repeat if we hadn't had the experience of what to do and what, more importantly, what not to do when you're making a feature. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, it's interesting you mentioned the budget. Like I liked that this film, I think you kind of knew your limits and tried to craft around that. Cause you know, one of the things like my, one of my pet peeves is, is bad special effects and, and in indie films, it's really tough. And it feels like this film, you kind of knew what you had, you knew what you could do to make it look high tech, but still not like break the bank. And you, you did that. You didn't try to go too much. You kind of stayed within your lane, which I thought was really clever. Yes. Yeah, so I think, I think, you know, where we spent the money was get good quality actors, mm -hmm. um, made sure we tried to pay like 
everybody that was involved in the production at least a little bit um apart from apart from like myself the co-director and uh, and um and a couple of other people who are pretty much our core team so that's where we put our money because that's where the quality shines through and as you say it's a case of then you know does every does every sci-fi film have to have amazing special effects if you look at something like i don't know looper for example mm -hmm. with you know the, there's no special effects in that at all there's, there's, you know you don't have to go down that route but um i think production design is where where you can elevate the quality of your film and um that's what we tried to do was make sure at least all the sets looked looked decent and looked interesting there was something for the eye to look at at all, all times yeah or even like uh like a movie that i thought of when i was watching this frequency where you i think you pretty pretty much have no effects right you have an old radio that that works and that you know is also a good sci-fi experience without having to kind of break the bank on things yes definitely definitely i, I think you know a lot of the sci-fis when I, I grew up as a kid didn't necessarily have loads of loads of special effects in them because the tv programs at the time couldn't have afford them so it's more of the concept that it is the sci-fi rather than the, you know having to have an effect to, as a crutch for your story and uh what like yard sale did you get your computer equipment at because i love seeing this like this amalgamation of different computer hardware that you then were able to kind of smartly use to make it look like it was doing something else. <laughs> was that something you had lying around? Did you just kind of good borrow question. stuff? <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, well, my day job is actually as an IT manager. So all of like the stuff that we've been chucking out for years and throwing in skips, I've been like put into one side. Oh, that's perfect. Um, and I, yeah, I managed to like most of it was like 10, 15 years old, but it had that aesthetic that was a bit more tactile for, you know, rather than a nice sleek laptop that you've got now, a lot of it looks a bit banged up or whatever. So, yeah, there's a, there's a good mixture in it and a bit of um, a bit of uh, skip um, or, or, as you say, yard sale uh, uh, surfing to to top up off off the back of it. Yeah, no, I mean, I've got I've got a home lab back there, and I, I love seeing kind of the old servers. And I think that you know, it makes it, it makes it feel like something that someone could do in their garage, right? Like you wouldn't want it to be that high tech because this person is trying to hobble it together from you know and avoid the gaze of his university. So it did it did fit perfectly. Thank you. Um, and I just have to ask, was the I don't know the, the portal device, the the speaking device, was that a ring light that was wrapped in copper wire? Because that's, that's I think, yeah, that's all it was. It that's was, awesome. Uh, and we, yeah, we, we would like to have added more to that sort of stuff, but it, again, it's about the the effects. And if people are concentrating on that, the problem we've probably done a bad job with the story. <laughs> no, I liked it. I, in my video review, I have a picture of like myself in front of my ring light. And I think it looks <laughs> it looks authentic. I, I like that aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I like, you know, along with the old equipment and the, you know, the, the ring light is the, the sound effects. They were like very old school, kind of like computer beep bop. Like who did that? Did you have someone doing sound or, you know, in a small indie film, did everyone just kind of have to pitch in? Did you just kind of go in and like find some sounds that you could use to make it look like a, like, or like it sound like an old computer? Yeah. Very, yeah. Good, good question. We, the, we had a very small cruise. We had five people on, on set uh, filming and we had, apart from myself in post-production, we had a composer that, that did all the music for the film, so all of the music's original. And then we had a sound designer for the, the for everything else. Um, so he came up with a lot of the things for the the machine, and we think he did a really good job because we wanted to we wanted to have something again that sounded meaty, sounded quite um, almost like an old machine rather than a computer. Or that. So, so we get going down that route, so going something a little bit less obvious was his brief and i think he did a really good job with that to to not go for the obvious yeah definitely and was he also responsible for i don't know what you call it, like the ui the the things that were on screen we had like a little bit of code and then you know like a like a waveform that came in was, was he also responsible for that or was that someone else doing that because yeah. i thought that also looked like nice fit the aesthetic of kind of a hobbled together type of situation that that was all done by myself <clears throat> oh, nice. and again it was again it was it was kept as simple as possible rather than to look too sci-fi and then it looks fake. The, the, the further you push it, the less it looks realistic. Mm -hmm. And we thought that for everything we were doing, the more that you push the sci-fi element, the less you will be invested in the story. Um, yep. So that's what we tried to do for all of it, was trying to keep it as grounded as possible. 
And uh, speaking of investment in the story, I loved Tom England in this film. Like I thought I really liked kind of his character. He, I don't think he's supposed to be the most likable character, but he does come off as like genuinely obsessed with this, this quest. And, and, you know, when, when he has some grief in the film, you can definitely feel it. How did you get him involved? Have you worked with him before? Um, no, he, again, he, he, he lives quite close to me within an hour sort of distance, but he's in another film you should look at if you haven't already called Cosmos, okay. uh, which was a, an indie sci-fi that came out in 2019. Um, and I saw him in the trailer for that. Um, and I thought he just looked like a leading man material and just from the little clip that I saw in the trailer. Um, so we went and met him after he had his, uh, his premiere over in the US. He came back to the UK for the premiere of Cosmos and um, we had a, a coffee together um, and I just gave him the script and said what, what do you think about this um, and he was pretty much we didn't even think about anybody else for the part as you say he's uh, he's not done a lot of film before which I think amazes people because he's, he's he, he by trade he's a, he's a stage actor mm-hmm. um, and the difference between stage and screen is so vastly different if you've not had the training in it. You know, you're, you're projecting, you're being big for stage. Um, whereas, you know, repeat and cosmos is very tight to their faces. You know, you're seeing a lot of expressions. You're having to play things down. Um, and Tom, Tom is just a natural screen presence, I think. And yeah, I, I totally agree. It's amazing. Yeah, no, definitely. That, that does surprise me because like you said, he does kind of, he is a little bit more timid in some of these. I, I really love when like something would go wrong and he'd be like, oh, well, you know, let's, you know, let's see what happened. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's not perfect yet. But then again, he, the, the stage presence is also interesting because there were a bunch of scenes where he was kind of on the stage. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't projecting to a, like a theater audience, but he was projecting to an audience of people and trying to kind of like sell his show. So I wonder if that, you know, that experience bled through in those scenes as well. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it did. And, and to be honest, like, we wanted to show his progression from that as well. So he has two different shows and he, he, pre- he presents very differently from show to show. So he's having to, to take down the quality he's presenting for the first one compared to how he would present in the second one. Yeah, no, definitely. His progression as he you know, becomes more confident, a little bit more cocky and also <laughs> and yeah. goes downhill was, was a nice thing to see. Um, and then I also liked, you know, Charlotte Ritchie. I think she gets kind of first billing in this. I, I assume she's like the biggest uh, name. But I, I liked her as well because she had a very difficult role because she has to also, she has a, a different, you know, she still has the grief, but she is trying to kind of move on, I think, and has a different level than uh, than Tom's character. So where did you get her? Had you worked with her before? Or was it, again, just kind of trying to find people that would fit in your story? You just kind of looked around and, and did a casting call? Yeah, we're extremely lucky to, to have Charlotte because in the in the UK she's um, a very strong presence on on, on television um, in a number of leading shows. Um, so we we literally sent the script to her agent, and her agent, um, credit to them, um, sent it on to her to read and said you, you should you should be involved in this. Which you know for somebody who for our scale of film, for the type of actor that Charlotte is, there is a big gap of what you would be able to expect. So credit to her agent for seeing the material and what that um, and what Charlotte could could do with it. Um, and again, she was she was exceptional because what we tried to do was a little bit play against type for what you would normally see in a sci-fi because she would normally be the weaker character in 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 other things that would would potentially um, not be holding it together but she's the one who is holding it together which we thought was important to try and show that you know it, it, it didn't matter from a male or female perspective that you, you can have these different viewpoints of of grief and we all we all um we all deal with it in different ways and i think charlotte did a, a really good job you yeah, know i agree i liked i liked seeing the the different kind of ways that they dealt with it it seemed you know like tom's character was obsessive and really you know trying to i guess fix it and and charlotte's character was kind of living with it but trying to live with it rather than trying to you know do what tom's character was so i liked that yeah that's exactly, that's exactly what we and, and, it, and it was from the start you you picked up exactly what we we're aiming for is tom's character is by nature an obsessive person and the situation has, has brought that out in him more and more um and so you mentioned the timeline like you'd seen tom in like a 2019 movie was was this film during COVID? Because it's a small cast. It, it seems like it could have been. I was, I'm not sure. You know, th- things coming out now, you kind of wonder if they were, or maybe they were filmed right before. What was the timing of, of this filming? 
Yeah, it was it was October last year. We filmed in a three week block. And oh, wow. In the UK, we had two lockdowns. It was between well, it was it was between we had three lockdowns, and it was between the second and third. Um, and we were extremely lucky to be able to get it shot in that amount of time because we wouldn't have been able to get certain actors back on set. So um, yeah, it, it was in those conditions, and if anything, it, it, it sped up production because we couldn't. We couldn't waste a second yeah. um so everything everything counted pretty much you know some things don't end up on screen that you initially uh, in visualize but um but yeah it was a, it was a very very tight um time frame and that that is i mean that feels risky because you, you never know when the lockdown is going to come right? if you're in the middle of production they're like all right we have to lock it down you're like well uh, <laughs> you're just gonna have like storyboards for the rest of the film right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I guess, you know, then, then it kind of works out because the, the filming's done, you go into a new lockdown, and then you start editing and trying to get the, the film complete. Is that kind of how the how the timing worked out, I guess? Yeah, I, I guess there's bits of me and Tom's Tom's character from an obsessive point of view. So um, <laughs> we'd, we'd, we'd finish for the day, and then I would come down into this little room here, which doubled up as a, a set as well. Um, and we would then put rushes together for the scenes for the day to see if anything was missing. Mm -hmm. So it'd be very, very loose rushes, but it at least give us an idea of if we let an actor go tomorrow, are we in trouble? So we'd have like loose rushes, but you, you're correct is having the lockdown after that um, then gave a, a time for focus because there wasn't much else that you can do apart from edit the film. So that's pretty much what happened afterwards. And one thing I did like about this film also, you know, there's a lot of things I like, but one thing that was kind of stand out, it kind of I had a mixed feeling of it. And if you saw my review, I had a mixed feeling, but it was, I, the more I thought about it, it was very interesting how like it starts off as a kind of supernatural film and then eventually it goes into kind of a temporal element. And I wonder, is that, was that how you were thinking throughout or is this a consequence of, like you said, you kind of started with this idea and started writing and it kind of evolved as the process was going through? Yeah, very, very much evolved. But then it sounds like you're trying to cheat the first half if you're not careful when you explain this. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it was very much the the core story was the was the story that you think you you know you're going to be watching from the start. Um, but it was about three quarters through writing, maybe maybe a half through writing. Yeah, I was I was happy with the, where it was going. Certainly with the strong, you know, the theatre elements and all those bits of 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 something that I hadn't seen really on. On, on screen before but then I just thought this is going to peter out into a very linear story if we're not careful mm -hmm. um and I saw your review and I think a lot of our feedback has been the same sort of thing it's either you're going to get on board with what happens or people will go in oh I didn't I wanted this to happen and it's like well that's not the story so yeah. <laughs> so but that's but that's fine because I want, I'd rather create something to talk about than maybe a linear story that turns into a crime thriller. I, I, I wanted to just create something that's unique in a, in a way. Um, so it, it is what it is as a film, but you're correct. We, if you watch it a second time, or from the very first scene, pretty much all the way through, there is a clue from the first scene to the last <laughs> of what's happening, happening. And that was fun, putting those Easter eggs <laughs> sometimes it, sometimes it's quite fun to, to write your, your film backwards which is what happened with repeat so mm -hmm. we we looped back round and went right now we've got now we know how this is going to end let's loop into let's loop into the start and build in some some fun stuff oh interesting yeah and i do like that you said you know essentially that you, audiences might feel cheated by the star because that is kind of how i felt but then like i you know in the review i said and, and here i'll say it again kind of the more i thought about it, i was like well that is that is a clever way to do this and that's a clever way to kind of represent how this is affecting the world and whatnot and you know i agree with you right if it was if it was just like okay now he has a device that he can talk to his to dead people with and then you know they, they solve the crime i mean that is kind of what you would expect but that might feel like just either a, just a, a hollow end or at least you know like a predictable end so yeah and, and, that, and that's the way, way we go if some if people dislike it for how it goes or or they have a, a, a general feeling that they weren't expecting. That, that, that's, that's fine with, with me because you're going to get people that really dig it as well. And I think if you don't take risks in film, you end up going mediocre. And that's what we tried to do is, and I think that's what we'll do with the next film as well, is, is know that you're not going to please everybody uh, or mm -hmm. not going to, not even 
as you said in your review, it, it may not, you know, the, the ending or even whatever part of the film is, it's not always going to be perfect for everybody. But as long as you you do get some people that, that are proper on board with it, you've you've done something right. And if you don't take risks, you're just going to end up middle of the road constantly. So, yeah, I think, I think and again, your explanation of, of what happened was perfect um, because a lot of people didn't follow it as well. So, <laughs> so, 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 it's a, yeah, it's a really good explanation. <laughs> okay, that's good to hear. <laughs> Um, and the last last question before I move on to the lightning round. Um, I, in my review, I described this as kind of having influences of you know what I saw like the Prestige and Frequency and like Pet Cemetery. Uh, were any of those kind of in your head when you were writing, or may, maybe they're just part of the I don't know the the, the ecosystem of film that, that you kind of draw on? But th those were kind of the three films I was like actively thinking when I was watching this film. Certainly, pre Prestige because mm -hmm. Nolan is again you'll see traits of that throughout out the film. Nolan for me is one of the best constructors of. Uh, non-linear storytelling and also you know prestige is one of my favorite films anyway just fantastic one, film. of, one of his <laughs> best films um <clears throat> so certainly the theatrics of thomas in the film is is is, is there um but um yeah i think i i, I think just uh, you know you've probably you've watched thousands of films i'm sure and, and I, I have as well you, you just find that certain things just seep in and you don't mm -hmm. really realize it until afterwards you know strangely ghostbusters was going to be one of the <laughs> themes for the start of this but it went completely in opposite direction that would be a very different film <laughs> exactly it was going to be a, it was going to be a very different film but there is i'm sure there is still little elements from that that, that film probably ghostbusters too as well in there that that I originally thought about um, certainly around the machine and, and, and how they put that together so their stuff so yeah i, I think Prestige, definitely there will be mm -hmm. elements that, that sunk in for that, but also um, probably, uh, I've spoken about this before, probably how I tried to tell the story was, was sort of like a Denis Villeneuve film as well, where trying to keep it in a real world environment mm -hmm. and not not make it feel too too big. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that, was, that was one of the, probably if I was have to say influences, um, that, that was one of them as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Prestige was the like uh, the first kind of big stage performance like that. That feels like that. I mean, I, I loved that style, kind of the, the grounding, and then also the, the stage presentation that that was. So yeah, that was definitely the one that I was like thinking of. And also then, you know, spoil. I guess we've already spoiled like the consequences yeah, of that <laughs> presentation, right? Is another aspect. So. <laughs> Um, so I know we have limited time, so I'd like to move, I call it the lightning round. There's very lightweight, short questions about the film, see how your experiences relate to things that happen in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I will not be offended at all, uh, <laughs> but I try to keep them very answerable. Uh, the first question is, have you ever taken the DNA test? I have not. Okay. That was, the next question was, to be anything surprised about it? But I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is, I guess, you know, either the most advanced technology that you've designed or like maybe... Uh, the most kind of like hobbled together piece of technology that you have, something that kind of relates to the the, the film and, and the garage nature of it. I think probably the machines for the film, for the film <laughs> would be that. Uh, but but I remember it. It's a really good question. I remember as a kid, right? I didn't know what stereo sound sounded like. I was about oh. eleven or twelve, and I had a mono like um, music player, and I thought that to get to sound to come out the other speaker, if I just put earphones on one and an input it would come out like <laughs> stereo i can't remember what it was but there was only sound coming out of one and that and i thought i would got stereo and it was just mono out of two speakers so probably that <laughs> and not just mono out of two, it's like mono with a delay so that must have just <laughs> driven you crazy yeah, it was terrible <laughs> uh, what is the oldest device you have used to contact someone like like a rotary phone like a telegraph anything like that yeah it would have been a rotary phone i'm that old nice. <laughs> oh, I had a rotary phone too, so it's not, it's not that crazy. Um, do you own a ring light? Oh, I own many ring lights. <laughs> <laughs> um, do they still have the copper around them? Could you just not give, you know? No, just... no, no, uh, not anymore. <laughs> I've got a lot of copper though, if you need any. <laughs> no, uh, I've, I've got my main one and, and uh, I actually have some copper wire, so yeah, I, can, I can make my own device. Although I don't think I'd want to, given what Careful. happens. Yeah. Uh, have you ever volunteered at some sort of stage performance? No, and that would terrify me. Okay. Yeah, I, I must have at some point. I probably did terrible because I probably got nervous, but you know, that's what you'd expect. And uh, the last question is, if you could talk to anyone who is deceased, who would it be? And bearing in mind that this is not the consequence of your film where, you know, you would unintentionally harm them. <laughs> if you could talk to anyone who is deceased, who would that be? 
Oh, that's a that's a really good question. It's not something that, that comes to mind really. I think I think Hitchcock would just be a really interesting person to speak to because I don't think I'd have to do much speaking. He would do a lot of the speaking. He'd just be able to take in the information. Um, and it, for me, he's an absolute pioneer in you know mystery storytelling and and just inventing a lot of the things that we see today on screen. So yeah, Hitchcock would be amazing to speak. To. That's a good one. And uh, and also it would probably result in some sort of horrible consequence, right? Because it's Hitch- Hitchcock, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so the film is out now. It's in theaters and digital. Uh, it's, the, the film is repeat. You can watch it in theaters if it's near you. I think it's a limited release. And also at home if you don't have it near you. I, I really liked it. I think it's a, it's a very clever film. Um, but now that it's out, you're promoting it. Uh, you mentioned already that there's another movie on the horizon. Do you have uh, anything else you're working on that you can share about? Or is it still kind of hush-hush in the playing stages? Yeah, it's, it's in the, the minute it's stuff like this with you, um, which I'm really enjoying, like just talking about something that we've been talking about between five people for, for a year <laughs> and just being able to put it out there. It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and then just like, again, it's the seeds of like little ideas that I'm getting at the moment. And again, it will be very much within probably the, the feel of repeat in the sort of same sort of world. I think a mystery um, that may be grounded in, horror or it may be grounded in sci-fi to a degree but that it, it will be a an investigation mystery type, type film again i think that that sounds perfect i i, I, I that, that's right in my wheelhouse so i'm looking forward to that so thank you so much for your time and uh ch- make sure to check out repeat it's available everywhere thank you awesome thank you so much that was richard miller the writer and co-director of repeat which is available in theaters digitally and on demand on november 19 2021 so it's out now Uh, If you liked this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.